Hi everybody, how are you? I uh, hope everything's good in your world. This week, another look back to around 2005 with my Lag Roxanne Master Series. <laughs> So as mentioned, this is my lag Roxanne from 2005. Now I've got a few of these Roxannes. In fact, they were the first uh, lag guitars that I models that I ever tried, which we'll get onto in a bit. Um, I had a quick look around before I started this video about what's currently available. And if you've seen my video on my uh, Imperator, my lag Imperator, the one with the spotted maple top, you might remember that I said they don't really make many electrics anymore. They tend to concentrate more on the acoustic lines that they carry at the moment that they produce. So you don't really find many new Roxanne models around. Having said that, back in the mid 2000s, there were loads and it was like their main electric that they really pushed. And there were various different models at various different price points. Some made uh, overseas they were the cheaper models and then a lot of them the higher end ones were made at their factory in France as this one was um, but if you have a look like I say you can still find the odd one on reverb and some second hand places like that uh, a lot of right handers but there are some left handers that I found as well uh, uh, they seem to hold their price quite well as well so what's it all about why don't we cut to some specs and have a look this guitar has a mahogany body with a quilted maple top and natural maple binding. It has two Seymour Duncan pickups and independent volumes for each pickup, each with a coil tap. The neck has an ebony fretboard with maple binding and 22 medium frets with mother of pearl inlays. So I got this guitar in uh, in around 2005. It was one of two that they made uh, especially for me, which I was very grateful for. Uh, I had this one. I've also got a blue one, a custom shop one in blue, which I got the year before, I think. And then I, they made this one for me too. And I used it um, uh, with, when I had the hair, it got a lot of use. I'll throw some rather embarrassing pictures up. But um, yeah, I used it on obviously a lot of the clinics and when I was doing the, all the shows um, with Rob and Farid with the band, doing the band thing, uh, I used this guitar quite a lot during 2005. It was probably, the use of this guitar was probably cut short by the fact that not long after that, probably the year after that or so, Lag bought out the Imperator, the Spalted Maple one that I've done the, the video on before. They bought that model out and that was the single cut kind of version of this, which was much more at my street. So I started using that guitar a lot more. So I didn't really use these quite so much after that. Having said that, it's been really nice to play it again today. And like I say, it did get a lot of use uh, to begin with when I first got it in those first couple of years or so. Uh, it hasn't aged particularly well on some of the hardware. It's uh, quite tarnished. And I just want to say that top, really, that, that quilted maple top, when I got it, I've got a bit of an aversion to black guitars in general, having only been, I think I've mentioned before, the only choice available when I was younger, really, was black electric guitars. And I've actually, ironically, done some videos on some recently as well, uh, like the Jackson and the Charvel, and they're black, you know. But this guitar in black looks a little bit different because of that maple top, and it's absolutely beautiful. The other one I've got, the Custom Shop, which I'm sure I'll dig out and do a video on at some time as well, 
uh, has a very similar top but it's in blue so it looks like water so they are beautiful looking guitars and the attention to detail with these um, French made ones was amazing especially with that natural maple binding that goes all the way around the edge of the body and the neck as well I always really liked the scale of it always feels slightly short like shorter than a Les Paul or something like that and it feels quite easy to play as does the neck because the neck's sort of a very comfortable size and easy to get your hand round. So the whole thing feels quite, I don't know, a little bit smaller than a lot of standard electrics. Um, and the in terms of versatility, it's always been great because it's got coil taps on each of the humbuckers. Now let's talk about the pickups because I'm struggling to remember which pickups these are. I know they're Seymour Duncans and that was at a request of mine. A lot of the other models that they made out of France at this time had Damasios in, um, but I specifically asked for Seymour Duncans. So I'm going to say that the bridge was probably is probably a Seymour Duncan distortion because that's uh, a pickup I used a lot in my younger days. Uh, the neck, not sure. So I'm probably going to guess they put a 59 in there but I could be wrong. Uh, so don't have a definitive answer on the pickups, but I can tell you that they are obviously Seymour Duncans and they sound pretty good. Um, it was nice to play it, recording the tracks up with this. Uh, it still sounds really nice. It still sounds really versatile. Uh, the lower gain stuff is nice. The higher gain stuff is good and it cleans up pretty well as well. So um, yeah, all in all, you know, I, I, I really, it's been, again, with all these uh, videos I've been doing with some of my older guitars, nice to get it out. And, uh, and, and play it again. Okay, that's nearly it for this week. Just this week's recommended listening, which is an album from 2011 by the Tedeschi Trucks band called Revelator. If you're watching this, uh, you should know who Derek Trucks is. I really hope you do, uh, because he's obviously an unbelievable um, player. Uh, sly, his slide playing is uh, incredibly toneful and soulful and everything you want it to be his wife susan tedeschi is an amazing singer and player as well and this album above all else just has some brilliant songs a standout obviously being midnight in harlem which is uh one of, i think one of the best songs ever written it's amazing so please go and check it out but i'm sure you've probably already heard it haven't you uh that's it for this week hope you've had fun and i will see you on the next one